In this video, we are going to look at the scientific notation practice. So starting with uh, number one, it says convert the given values to scientific notation. So for scientific notation, we need a number between one and 10, and then we need to multiply it by 10 to some power. Um, and the 10 to some power serves to get it back to its real value. So first let's start by getting a number between one and 10. Um, so 287 is not between 1 and 10, so we start by moving the decimal point until we have a number between 1 and 10. So if there's no decimal point in the number that you can see, um, like in number 1, number 3 you can see where the decimal point is, it's right there, but in number 1 there is no decimal point, 287. So if there's no decimal point shown, the decimal point is all the way to the right at the end of the number. So, 287, we need to move the decimal point until we have a number between 1 and 10. So I'm going to start by moving it once to the left, and now we have 28.7, which is still not a number between 1 and 10, it's larger than 10, so we'll move that decimal point again. Now I have 2.87. 2.87 is between 1 and 10, so that's our value that we are going to start with. Two point eight seven and we of course need to multiply this by 10 raised to some power in order to get it back to its original value of 287. The exponent or the power that we put on our 10 is equivalent to the number of times that we moved our decimal point um, and so looking back we moved our decimal point one time two times, so our power is going to match that value of two. Now the last step in writing scientific notation is determining whether your exponent, uh, in this case our two, whether that exponent is positive or whether it is negative. Um, so the way we decide that is we determine if our original value is larger or smaller than the value that we wrote in our scientific notation. So the 2.87, we need to say, is 287 larger or smaller than that 2.87? If it's larger, um, then we're going to have a positive exponent, and if it's smaller, less than our uh, original value, then we're going to have a negative exponent. So our original value, 287, is indeed larger than 2.87, so that means our exponent is going to remain a positive 2. Um, and we positive 2 like that, but we don't typically show um, positive or on our exponent. We only show if it's negative. So we will write our answer as 2.87 times 10 to the second power. That is the correct scientific notation for 287. Okay, moving on to number two. We have 840,000. That is not between 1 and 10, so we are going to have to move our decimal point um, a few times at least. So notice in number 2, there is a comma. A comma is not the same thing as a decimal point. We don't start moving our decimal point from here. Um, we have no decimal point, so we start by moving it from the very end. We place it at the end, and we'll start by moving it from there. So don't confuse a comma with a decimal point, two different things. So this decimal point at the end, we need to move it until we get a number between 1 and 10. Move it once, definitely not between 1 and 10. Twice, still not close. Three times, so 840.000, we're getting closer, but still not there yet. 84.0 is still not between 1 and 10, so we'll move it again. 8.40000, that is between 1 and 10. Um, so that is our number, 8.4. Now the reason that I don't have to write all these zeros 
is because in our original value those zeros were not significant. So we only really need to show the significant figures in our scientific notation. Now if it told us to write this to three significant figures then I could add a zero to make um, there be three significant figures is 8.40 that zero is to the right of the decimal point so that's a useful trick if you want to show a value to more significant figures or a specific number of significant figures but in this case we don't need to do that um, we're just keeping with the original number of significant figures we'll start with 8.4 and of course we need to multiply by 10 raised to some power and our power is going to be the number of times we moved that decimal point so one two three four five times so our exponent will be five and then we need to decide is that a positive five or a negative five and our original value is larger than our scientific notation, which means that our exponent needs to be positive. So we don't need to show that positive sign. 8.4 times 10 to the fifth is the final answer. Up next, number three, we have 0.00000683. So that's a pretty small number, and we want to show this in scientific notation. That's not between 1 and 10, that's way, way less than 1, so we need to move our decimal point until we have a number between 1 and 10. So we have a decimal point, so we just start here, uh, and this time instead of moving to the left, I'm going to move to the right because we need to make our number bigger so that it's between 1 and 10. So I'm going to move it once, still not close to 3 times, let's move it again. 0 0.683, still not between 1 and 10, so we'll move it again. 6.83, that is between 1 and 10, so that'll be our starting value. 6.83 times 10 to some exponent power. And then we need to know how many times we moved to that decimal point. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 times. So times 10 to the fifth power. And last but not least, we need to figure out if that 5 is a positive 5 or a negative 5. So our original number, 0 0.00000683, that is definitely smaller than 6.83. So it's smaller, it's less than 6.83 which means that our exponent needs to be negative. So I'm going to make this a negative 5. Number 4, we have 6, oh wow, it's a really long number. I don't even want to think about having to write that down over and over again. So let's go ahead and convert to scientific notation. Remember that our commas are not the same thing as a decimal point, so we're going to put our decimal point at the end. And then we're going to start moving it until we get a number between 1 and 10. So I'm going to go ahead and move it several times before we start checking because this is a really big number. 603.4, still not between 1 and 10, so we'll move it again. 60.34, not quite there. 6.034, that is between 1 and 10. So we're going to write that down. All those significant digits, 6.034. And we don't need to include all these trailing zeros because they are not significant. So 6.034 times 10 to some power, which tells us how many times we moved that decimal point. We moved it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 times. We moved that decimal point a lot of times that time. So to the 8th power, and now we need to decide if that 8 is positive or if it's negative. Our original number, this big old number over here, is much bigger than that 6.034, so that means our exponent is going to be positive. And remember, we don't have to show a positive exponent. We're converting some more given values to scientific notation, starting um, at our decimal point. We're going to move it until we get a number between 1 and 10. So 0 0.6 is still not between 1 and 10, it's still less than 1, so I'm going to move that decimal point all the way to the end. So 6 times 10 
raised to some power. Um, we need to look at how many times we moved that decimal point. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven times to the seventh power. And our original number is less than our final number, so our exponent should be negative here. So 6 times 10 to the negative 7. Now that we've done a few of these, they get a lot easier. Uh, next we have 5.8. 5.8 is already between 1 and 10, so we don't need to move the decimal point at all. We'll just keep that 5.8 times 10. And we moved the decimal point no times. The number that is no times would be 0. So 5.8 times 10 to the 0th power. And anything to the 0th power is 1. So 5.8 times 1 is essentially what we're writing. So in this case, it really is not easier to write our number in scientific notation. It's actually more work, but we can still do it if we need to. 5.8 times 10 to the 0th power. Number seven, we have a 5,100,000, big, big number. Those commas are not decimal points, so we're going to put our decimal point at the end, and then we're going to start moving it until we get to a number between 1 and 10. So 5.1 is our number between 1 and 10 times 10 to some power. And of course, our power is our number of times we moved our decimal point. One, two, three, four, five, six times. So times 10 to the sixth power. And our original number is much bigger than our 5.1 that we put in our scientific notation. So that means that our exponent needs to stay positive. Last but not least, number eight. 0 0.009003. We need to move that decimal point until we get a number between 1 and 10. This time I'm moving to the right because I need my number to get bigger. 9.003 is indeed between 1 and 10. So that's what I'm going to write down. 9.003 times 10 to some power, which is equal to the number of times we moved our decimal point. We moved that decimal point three times, so that is our power, and our original number is a lot less than our value that we used in our scientific notation, so our exponent should be negative. Last but not least, we're going to go the other direction. Instead of converting numbers into scientific notation, we're going to take values in scientific notation and convert them back to standard form. Um, standard form is also sometimes called numeral form. So basically, it's just the normal version of a number that you are used to seeing from elementary school, way back when you learned about math for the very first time. Um, so this typically people find easier. We just have to pay attention to which direction we're moving our decimal point. So if we have a negative exponent, we're going to move our decimal point to the left. And if we have positive exponent, we're going to move our decimal point to the right. Okay. So in this first problem, we have a negative decimal point. So I'm going to move my decimal point to the left. So I'm going to start by writing this over here, 1.02. Move it to the left one time, two times, three times, four times. So my decimal point now goes here. And in all the blank spaces that don't have digits, we just fill in zeros. Um, and we sometimes call those placeholder zeros. It's just holding the place value of the number. Um, so we're just going to fill in those placeholder zeros. So we have 0 .000102. I'm going to rewrite that value. And I always like to start with a zero in front of the decimal point as well. So 0 0.00. 0, 0, 0, 0.00102. That's our final answer there. Um, all right, number two, 8 times 10 to the fifth. So um, this time our exponent is positive, so we're going to move our decimal point to the right. 8 point 
where I move it to the right one, two, three, four, five times. And all those empty spaces we're going to fill with zeros. Uh, and then we'll rewrite our value, 8, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Now I'm going to put a comma. Did I do that right? I did. Just to make it a little easier to read. So 800,000 with that comma makes it a little easier to see all of those zeros and count them more easily. It's not required though. You don't have to have a comma in your number. Let's see. Number 3. 7.32 times 10 to the third. So let's move that 7.32 over here. And then we need to move this decimal point three times to the right because our exponent is positive. One, two, three. That empty space, we're going to fill in a zero. And then we'll rewrite our number seven, three, two, zero. And we'll put a comma there to make it easier to read. Last but not least, 5.59 times 10 to the negative third. I'll write that number out. And this time our exponent's negative, so we're going to move to the left. 1, 2, 3. Our decimal point's now here, and we're going to fill in those blank spaces with zeros. So we have 0. 0.0055. Nine. And that is our last problem.